I'm going to take a look at a new meshing system for Clipper called Clipper Adaptive Meshing and Purging. This will work on any printer running Clipper that uses a probe, but I'm going to be talking about it in context of my Voron 2.4. This was written by Kyle Issa, who is a member of the Voron design team, as well as Maple Leaf Makers, who does great work. Julian Schill, who among other things, is responsible for porting the LED effects library that we used in our rainbow LED video. Kaga Urufu, who is uh, one of the people behind Object Cancellation, as well as other members of the helpers and contributor team. So what this does is two things, really. There's the adaptive meshing that leverages the exclude object feature in Clipper to figure out where your objects are in the bed and then mesh only in those areas as well as an adaptive purge that will purge near your objects rather than just doing a line along the side of the bed. So why would you want adaptive meshing? There have been other solutions that will do this, but they all concentrated primarily on speeding up the meshing process where it seems like the priority here is increased accuracy. So let's say you're doing a five by five mesh on a 300 millimeter printer, there's going to be a fair amount of space in between those five points in each plane. But if you're doing a five by five mesh on let's say a quarter of the size of your print bed, then you're going to have those five points much closer together and actually gives you more accuracy in your mesh. So this seems like a pretty straightforward process. Um, I have not done this yet. We're just gonna go for it. So follow along and we'll go through the instructions and make this work. So here on the GitHub page, there is a lot of information on why this works. Uh, again, this leverages the exclude object feature in Clipper. And we can see some explanation of how the meshing works. There is a note here about the relative reference index, which you would normally use with your bed mesh. My printer does use automatic Z, so I don't really, it seems like I don't have to worry about that. We will find out. So how do I get started? You must have a version that, of Clipper that supports object exclusion, which I do because I've been using object exclusion. But let's go ahead and take a look. In my printer, I actually have the object exclusion in the macros. And I'm going to go ahead and move that into the printer config just to make sure that I am absolutely set up here the way it tells me I should be. So with that done, Exclude object is now in my printer config. Make sure you have enable object processing enabled in Moonraker. So let's go to Moonraker. File manager, enable object processing is true. So that's done. Must enable object labeling in your slicer. I use super slicer, so let's take a look. Label objects is enabled, so I'm good there. If you're using bed mesh calibrate for probe, you must comment it out. Oh, okay. I am using a bed mesh calibrate macro override because I use a Euclid, so I need to take that out.
Right. So here is where my Euclid configuration renames the original bed mesh calibrate and does this code. So let's go ahead. And we will comment that out. I'm going to copy this because I want to move my status messages over. So I'll throw this in Visual Studio. And we'll need to do that set up in the adaptive mesh configuration, which I should pull in now. So first thing to do is I need to create, oops, not upload. I need to create adaptive mesh config. Open that, let me go back here. Get the raw text and we'll paste that in here. Okay. Well, it looks like so there is a variable to enable the LEDs, and it looks like Status meshing is correct, so I'm going to rename this to true so that it will use my LED macros. So this is kind of cool. This macro has fuzzing of the mesh points. One of the things that came up during the Voron tap presentation is some concern that the nozzle could potentially make marks on your print surface as it's pressing down. So one, th one obvious advantage of using the CAMP macro for adaptive meshing is that every time you change to a different plate arrangement of parts, you're going to be meshing in different areas. So you're going to be tapping in different areas. But if you're the kind of person maybe that uh, is print, you're running a print farm where you have plates that you run very often, this fuzzing will actually make the probe use slightly different points so that you're not always probing in the same place. So I will go ahead and change this to true because I'm interested to see it. So next we have the dock enable, which we absolutely need. And if I go back, so my docking commands are M401 and M402. So M401 and M402. And that should be, should be everything. Save and close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, let's see, so let's go back to here. We have the adaptive mesh macro configured, so we need to include that in our printer config. So let's go here and we'll add that and save and close. So I've made a bunch of changes to my config. Let's do a firmware restart. Okay. No errors. It's always a bonus. Well, let's give it a shot. I have a plate sliced for a, an LCD case which is just in the center of the bed. So I'm going to rearrange some stuff here so that we can see what's going on a little bit better. Let me bring this camera over. 
and let's go for it. Now, it's a little chilly in my garage. It is gonna take some time to go ahead and bring the chamber up to temp. So I will go to an overhead shot of the printer uh, from my webcam that's inside the chamber once it gets ready to do the bed mesh and we'll see if it does its thing. So the printer is getting ready. It just did a QGL. So next up should be the auto probe offset and then bed mesh and we will see if the macro does its thing. And now the moment of truth. We are docking. And that is not where it would normally be meshing. So it looks like we have adaptive bed mesh happening. So I'm going to go ahead and let this print. And for the next plate, let's try the, uh, the purge. Okay, so print is done. And overall, it's, it's a print. Maybe could use a little more squish, but no artifacts or anything on the bottom layer here. Uh, I think it's good. So while this was printing, I went ahead and set up the purge. So much the same way, we just create a configuration file here in Clipper. Uh, I might need to tweak this tip distance variable, but we'll see. Um, so you have to create that configuration. Then in my print start, you have to add in the adaptive purge macro call, which is right before it starts to print. So I have loaded up a new model after restarting firmware, because obviously if you change anything in configuration file, you've got to reload the firmware for the take. So we'll sit back and see what happens when this goes to purge. And it looks like we are purging. A little Voron logo purge. So there we go. That is adaptive meshing and adaptive purging. I really want to thank Kyle Issa and the rest of the crew that came up with this. Seems like a really uh, useful thing, especially for those of us that are looking forward to switching over to TAP. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to giving you more content soon.